Um, so today we're very, very pleased to be joined by Dr. Shegan Oke um, of the University of Pretoria, and he will be presenting under our focus area of mathematical modeling and analysis in life sciences. Um, Dr. Oke was born in Ibadan in state Nigeria and obtained his first degree in pure and applied mathematics from Lautec, Nigeria. His second degree was in mathematics from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and his third in applied mathematics from the University of Zululand, South Africa, where he majored in mathematical oncology. Um, he has published both infectious and non-infectious research papers and has presented in local and international conferences. He is currently a po postdoctoral fellow of the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics at the University of Pretoria under the tutelage of Prof Rashid Ufiki. Um, and today he will be presenting a seminar entitled Mathematical Model for the Estrogen Paradox in Breast Cancer Treatments with opt Optimal Control. So please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. OK. And please, Shigan, if you would like to go ahead and take over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dain, for your pre for your introduction. I believe you can hear me. Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thanks, every one of us. I welcome you once again to this um, talk. I can see a, a lot of people are joining all over the world. And today I'll be speaking on mathematical model for estrogen paradox in breast cancer treatment with optimal control. Uh, the control we'll be talking about here will be quite different from usual control. We'll be talking about bank bank control. And uh, this work is joint work with uh, my old professor Rashid Ufiki and, uh, and with some of his encouragement and inputs, we have it together. Yeah, the outline of today's talk will be, we have a section for introduction. We have um, current, our, during the introduction, we'll be talking about overview of our previous work, research, um, mathematical model formulation on estrogen and uh, cost effectiveness and its results. Then we'll move to the current research discussion of results and conclusion. And the aim is to formulate, we are trying to formulate, formulating a mathematical model of estrogen paradox for the treatment of breast cancer and analyze with bank bank control. Yeah, uh, cancer arises from DNA mutation. As of today, nobody, even WHO cannot tell us because of, uh, the cause of cancers or different cancers all over our body. But the problem is we have a lot of risk factor that, that's um, linked together that becomes that we can say, okay, this is the risk factor that are responsible for this, for this particular part of the body, can, cancer from this part of the body. Therefore, we'll be, today we'll be looking at uh, estrogen. And if from here now you can see the normal cell, as the normal cell is moving, there is something we call a DNA mutation. DNA mutation can arise from all these risk factors that have been mentioned. Take, for example, risk factor can be some believe is alcohol, some believe is hereditary, some believe is tobacco, some believe is hormonal imbalance, and so on. So for today, we'll be focusing on that hormonal imbalance when estrogen, you know, estrogen responsible for over 70%, according to WHO, over 70% of um, breast cancer. That is the hormonal imbalance responsible for that. So we have the, it can be hereditary, as I said, it can be radiation or chemical 
exposure, they can be spontan spontaneous errors during the DNA duplication, you know, anything can happen in, that can cause DNA mutation. Now from here, we can see that the, the DNA is being mutated here and moved to this particular site. And from then it grows up to uncontrollable. So what is responsible for uncontrollable? Then at the end of this talk, we'll be able to, you know, discuss it better to ourselves so that we can know what is obtained, what is responsible. According to WHO this year, we are told that cancer is the second leading cause of death globally and is responsible for estimated, for an estimated of 9.6 million deaths in 2018, according to the 2018 report, that's what they are giving us. Globally now we believe the, the cancer dead, that is one in six deaths is due to cancer. Approximately 70 of deaths for cancer occur in low and middle income countries. So take for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, now we are part of them. So if 70% of deaths for cancer, if it's responsible, if you are uh, the death responsible for death over 70% or approximately 70%, so we can know that it's a, it's a, it's a uh, urgent things that we need to focus on. We need to focus on cancer studies. We need to know detail about it. How can we talk to our people? Around the third, what of third of death from cancer are due to the leading behavior, dietary, risk, high body marks, and so on. That is obesity and so on. Tobacco is also used, is the most risk factor for, the, for cancer and it's responsible for approximately 22% of cancer deaths. In 2017 alone, you can see the report in 2017, also pathology services and in general in public sector. So I won't dwell much, I won't bother you with these stories, but let's just look at the example of this cancer. Now, this young guy in India has this, is one of the biggest cancer in the history of cancer when it comes to the, uh, the, the new cancer. So cancer can come up from any part of our body. So it depends on where the DNA mutation occur. So let's take note of that. Now, today focus on breast cancer. Look at the example of this breast cancer. What they did to this woman, they have to remove the breast cancer, the, 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 the tumor and the relapses that occur when a reoccurrence, it now turns to be. So it's one of the way, is one of the biggest cancer, a breast cancer in the world, in the history of breast cancer. Now, our focus today would now look at the South Africa, where is our domain is. Now, it, let's look at the trend. According to WHO, in South Africa, for the trend in South Africa, what will happen in 2040, the, the, the trend will be the cases of uh, cancer, especially breast cancer will be 22,648 new cases. Now, look at the lung cancer. So it simply means we need to seriously work on this uh, advocate about the cancer, about the cancer research and and our government should be able to fund some of those things. And, but let, 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 let's look at it. Look at the burden, the burden of cancer on the budget also. Now, in, the, in 2018, we, we have over, we have uh, 170,467. Look at the debt, 57,000, 57,000 debts. But if you look at the incident rate, we have 13.1% incident rate. Is the only, is the cancer that has the highest incident rate as of 2018. Now look at the projection in 2040. So it simply means we need more and on cancer research. So one of the our view of our view of previous research, we've been working myself and my supervisors my, during my PhD work, I was able to do something 
on optimal control analysis of a mathematical model of breast cancer. We're just trying to build on and look at, go in depth about breast cancer and estrogen as a whole. Here we work on um, ODE system of linear equation, which leads us to this. We have normal cell, tumor cell, immune response, and uh, estrogen. Now, during this, we consider this estrogen as, if you look at this estrogen, the only source of estrogen we put there. Then we introduce control. Now, control we use here, we use two control, which is quadratic. We, we use quadratic uh, approach. That is, our U1 represent uh, chemotherapy, while the U2 represent ketogenic diet. Remember, WHO also mentioned about dietary. Now, we discovered that chemotonic di ketogenic diet is one of the diets that normally stop uh, the cancer cell. How? It's you lower the carbohydrates, then you increase your, you make your protein to be moderate, then you now increase the fat. What kind of fat are we talking about? Edible fat, like avocado, like coconut fat, and so on. So in this context, we are just looking at the two control, how reliable are they, and what are the things that we can do with the two control. So that's the case we had here. But in the another realm, I will come to this particular diagram later. In another phase that we, we have optimal control, we have control um, of this particular function that, that deal with the objective, objective function is all about try to minimize tumor cell, minimize SS estrogen, then introduce your control. Now we are able to realize this. Then another way we also we still consider the we are trying what we did in this model that quite different from the first model was to introduce a control to the point at which we have the source of estrogen. Meanwhile, estrogen as excess estrogen in the body can come up due to several factors. One of the factor is by the time you begin to take, uh, uh, after your menopause, you take shots, estrogen shots, just to look fresh, especially remember immediately you stop menopause, you will not be menstruating again. And the study make us understand that when you menstruate, you, the, the, the female look fresh, but by the time you are not menstruating again, your faces started wrinkled and coming up. And at the end of the day, people want to look fresh and they are taking the estrogen shots. So many things are responsible for it. So we try to find the cost effectiveness analysis on this particular model. And we discover that we have the use of anti-cancer drug only. This is the effect. The, the second event, we combine the both together and we have this event. And the third one, we are able to use ketogenic diets alone. And the study, the, our finding shows that it is better we combine the both, that is both anti-cancer drug and ketogenic diet. But at this point, we are trying to consider in the middle calm environment like Africa, where you don't have too much resources to buy chemotherapy. So you can use your diet to fight along the line while you use little of chemotherapy just to support or to enhance the death, the apostosis of the cancer cells. Like I said about this diagram, this diagram is just taking us from January 2020. It's just telling us how the goals of what we call optimality, optimal treatment in the patient. One of the things we need to do as a mathematician and as a life scientist, or you need to check, check your objective function, check your mathematical representation, check your data type, check your specific biology. But the key thing here is our biomarker. What is, which 
type of biomarker is responsible to this particular cancer that we are trying to work on. But unfortunately, we are, we are able, up to now, we are able to, there are a lot of argument on breast cancer to get a specific biomarker for breast cancer. That's why it's always difficult to get some of the data to use when it comes to this particular uh, cancer. Now let's move on to, because of our time, so we have this result, but in the current research, we have estrogen-based model reviewed. And uh, for example, the PILI 20, 2005, they actually work and validate, they validated mathematical model of cell-mediated immune response to tumor growth. What they did here is they tried to introduce what we call the optimal control and uh, they now begin to check which of the control is responsible. How do we now validate some of this data with the, uh, the immune response because they link the two together. Then Santec 2007 also work on estrogen paradox, an apoptosis. Now what they did here is they get that, these are the medical um, papers to support our, to, that motivated this study. They gathered the patient, some patient, and they now we have patient A and we have patient B. The patient A, they use what we call uh, the data set they, 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 they use, they place some on a particular estro, uh, estrogen. Uh, what do you mean by estrogen paradox? They try to use estrogen to treat that breast cancer. Meanwhile, according to their study, for you to use estrogen paradox, you must have a postmenopausal experience. That is, the postmenopausal experience here is, is just to, to try as much as possible that not that you enter menopause today and you start the treatment tomorrow. It must more than a year before you join that, before the estrogen can work, high dose of estrogen can work. Now, according to the study, they were able to identify that you can only use high estrogen between five years to 10 years. After that, it will turn to another, it will become another dangerous thing. So if you continue to use it, then high dose of estrogen by Benick also supports the study, use the high dose estrogen for the treatment of breast cancer. Why the PILI again in 2001, they also used the approach to check the immune response and drug therapy. But in this case now, in 2011, Falaponios, they also work on ketogenic diet and high protein diet. But the last one, the LONI, the LONI at all, they did high dose estrogen treatment for postmenopausal patients and heavily exposed to endocrine therapy for research treatment. Thank you. Now, at this stage, we are working, we are checking what we call, uh, we are looking at estrogen level in hormone. For example, what are the estrogen level here? The estrogen level here is from our childhood. We have this. When you get to the poverty, puberty, you get to this stage. But at the from 50 and above, the menopause gets started. At the age of 55, you move on to postmenopause. So invariably, if you want to assign any drug to any patient, especially using estrogen to treat it you need to get to this particular age and still test that patient whether it's fertile or not. So some of the, our, uh, our, we have some assumption here. Number one assumption is that we consider the two, the, the model consider two type of cancer cell, dormant cancer cell, which is represented by TD and active cancer cell, which is TA. The both population are doomed to grow in a logistical, in logistic version. Then the clinical evidence shows that 
and they suggested that uh, active cancer cells undergo estrogen-induced excess mortality. So here we include in our model an excess per capita death rate, and uh, we increase the le increasing level of estrogen. Also, based on the recent study, we assume that high estrogen level stimulate dormant cell stimulate dormant cell activation. Why the role of Z, which is our Z here is in that uh, we call it P, is P53 protein that normally in that the activation of cancer cell, of dormant cell to become an active. So the activation rate of dormant cancer cell is alpha, which we are going to draw more on. And it assumes to increase with increasing level of our estrogen and decrease with increasing value of P53. Because our P53 represents tumor suppressor protein, as I said, and the activity will stop formulation along the line. So for simplicity's sake, we are going to consider two particular uh, scenario. The first scenario will be a general case, and why the second scenario will be on estrogen paradox. Here is the model. Now, you can see that our TD, which is the TD, the T, the TA, the T, the E, the T, the, the Z, the T. All these are variables and those are the parameters. Now we consider this one in a general case and we also consider it when it becomes paradox. So one of the things I want you to note, I would like to let us know that here that for the sake of our mathematical analysis, we only require that the function alpha and mu are positive value. However, to put the mathematical finding in the context of estrogen paradox, we will make some additional assumption of this function. The biological motivation and implication of this assumption will be explained there. So we have the parameters we, uh, our rate of dormant cancer cells, and uh, we have our own, we have our own uh, growth rate of active cell to be RA, then the carrying capacity is there, natural death rate is there, and the tumor clearance is also there. Now, for a mathematical model to be ascertained, before you work on that, you, the, we have to prove it, that is, the first show that is well posed in a biological feasible domain. In fact, using the, the variation of constant formula to that particular model, the model seven, we obtain, before we proceed the analysis, you can see that here we have, these are the, the region we are trying to try to work on. And uh, we show the positivity at the well post of the model. I don't need to, I don't want to bug you with this uh, mathematical jargon. Let's move on. Now, the beauty of this work is our local stability, our, our local, you know, we have local stability and we have, but we do not even bother to show the, we do not even bother to uh, put the local because they are implies in each other. We, we try to use uh, Quarkle Bendingsen theorem along the results of differential because the major thing we apply here is differential inequality. To analyze the global stability behavior, we let alpha naught to be equals to this. Don't forget our alpha naught is activ activation rate, is the activation rate. Then we, we try to consider the first thing when your alpha naught is alpha E naught comma Z naught. And mu naught is mu E naught over Z naught. 
Then our beta, because here we have the beta. The beta here is represent because the uh, biologically it's we were we would discover according to the literature that estrogen also the SS estrogen also causes problem to P53. So some of them have to follow to move out of this source due to the excess of that estrogen. That is estrogen also in that, this particular uh, P53, which is tumor suppressor protein. Then we have natural death, that lead and so on. So that's why you can see us here talking about this. Now, at this point, our E0 is when you pick the model, we try to separate them into two. We, we first of all take care, or if you take care of estrogen compartment and P53 compartment, we equate it to be zero. And at the end of the day, we have our mu, our lambda E over mu E. This particular ratio, we also use it as part of our equilibrium point and we have this Z naught to be this. Then at the end of the day, we're able to realize that our T D star is equal to D and our T A star is equal to D. Now, the following results happen. One of the things that, we, that happen here is just to show that the first condition is what happened when, because after the local stability and some other things, we were able to link the two together that if alpha not greater than, what is our alpha not? That is, if activation is greater than this particular RD. And what is our RD? If you check from here, is our growth rate of dormant cell, cancer cell. But if our activation is greater than at a growth rate, of dormant cell and our mu naught, which is our clearance, is also greater than the growth rate of active cells. Then we have, we said, the global the system is globally asymptotically stable. Then, if the point two at this point, the result two is if our activation rate is less, is greater than this particular growth rate of dormant cell. And is also mu naught, it now change. Otherwise, that is you change one of the condition is less than R naught, is less than this, then we have, the, the, the system will become unstable. Now, now, that will not lead us to another equilibrium point that not lead us to, we now have at the point whereby, if you look at this equilibrium point, the first equilibrium point says epsilon naught, which is at a point there's no tumor. But in a case whereby we have active tumor, that is dormant tumor is zero, active tumor is zero. But in this case, now when we consider the normal, uh, dormant tumor to be zero, an active tumor is there. So our, our system will be globally asymptotically stable. Now, if you now look at, at the point whereby all of them are coexist, it simply means this particular activation rate is less than dormant uh, growth rate of dormant cells. So we have what we call, they are globally asymptotically stable. So that's the first well, now the, the first theorem, the remark simply put it this way. For property one states that if additionally, our mu naught is also high enough, that is mu naught greater than R V, then all activated cell get destroyed by excess estrogen leading to elimination of both dormant and active tumor cell. Don't forget, we can only have the SS uh, elimination here by the time we already introduce high dose of estrogen for that patient. That is why 
it can only work and the patients you can only put it for according to the age range must be postmenopausal patient that is only when it will happen i will show us in our future uh, visualization our graphs so you will see what i mean and some of the points we are able to get to grab during the during the numerical analysis otherwise if is not too high that is mu not our clearance too much clearance is less than growth rate of activ activation then we have activated too much and the current capacity in this but let's quickly go but to put this result we need to, that's the general case but let's look at the the other case since we are looking at this is case of estrogen paradox now for estrogen paradox, all we need to replace is to replace this gentleman, this by alpha E, that is by replacing it by E over Z. If I'm replacing the ratio, if I put the ratio there, where the function alpha is chi and is continuously differentiable function and satisfy the following assumption. Number one, that is alpha chi equals to zero. If I only, if, uh, if chi is less or equals to chi C, our chi C we know is the E over Z, which is the exogen paradox. So therefore, it will be responsible for some positive treasure value, increasing function. But now let's quickly look at the theorem. So in this case now, we check the global stability also. Anytime you have your estrogen over P53. That is, remember increasing function is the estrogen and decreasing function is, is greater than chi D. This is, it will go, it will go to global asymptotically. It will be globally asymptotically stable. And the same results also happen to the condition two in part of our results and so on and so forth. But let's look at this. From the theorem two, we can see that if estrogen induced mortality, mu naught, is too low, then the tumor will persist, regardless of the ratio of estrogen to P53. Therefore, we try to encourage the oncologist at this point that, okay, if you really want, there are some points that they need to check. At this point, what amount of the drug are we going to, uh, the, the, the high dose are we going to put for this particular patient? At what we now remove the ratio, how that, that we remove the tumor that will not allow it to be persist in the body again. So at the end of the day, in other words, depending on the current level of estrogen, increasing in can lead to tumor persistence or elimination. How do we mean? Let me quickly, to say this, for the increases or excess of estrogen at the first stage, for anybody that is less than postmenopausal, it will always be cancer, breast cancer. But it will turn to elimination by the time the person is up to post, post menopausal age and try to increase and try to apply it. So by that time, estrogen paradox occur. So for this level now, we have activation rates of a function in ratio. That's why you see, this is the level of estrogen. And we can see from our graph that at this particular point, when it increases this, it leads to, look at what happened here. Our alpha, which is paradox, it leads to this particular point. But if you check, when you have moderate level of estrogen excess, moderate level, look at the, the, the tumor dormant, it increases. The dominance of our two months increases. Why the activation is lower than the tumor, lower than the tumor dominance. 
likewise, when your level of estrogen, you low level of estrogen excess, what happened at this point? Look at the graph. It reduces the tumor. Look, if you look at this point, the point at which we are talking about tumor dormant is lower. Compared with the value of tumor activation, it increases here. So now for the high level of estrogen, what happened? The two points are together. Sorry for the for this point because I was unable to separate them here. So at this point, you can see the tumor activation moving up and coming down. At this point, that's when we are talking about tumor. We are trying to showcase the paradox. The paradox of this study, it happened by the time the tumor activation is up and you increase this particular estrogen point also, our TD will also reduce. Now, that now lead us into bank bank control. The bank bank control, we are still working on some of those analysis, but I will just give us a tip what we've done so far on the bank bank control before we conclude. Now, on bank bank control, we try to introduce the um, maximum dos dosage of this particular, and uh, we introduce the linear and in this linear, we try to increase our P53 to enhance the P53 because anytime you introduce the chemotherapy, chemotherapy will also help. We, we know our, the way the, our body normally function is this. P53 is being secreted by body and uh, by P53 gland, uh, DNA. Uh, from then, the, uh, the, it's moved from them to the protein. And at the protein level, what happened? When the body is signal that this tumor is about to form, P53 kick off and it went there and it tried to, to imbue the action by regulating it, leading it to apostasis. But it when that tumor now overpowered the P53, that's what comes in our chemotherapy. We now have applied chemotherapy here. We have this objective functional to be. We are trying to minimize this particular gentleman called tumor activation. Tumor dormant doesn't have any problem, but when it comes to activation, that is where the problem lies. So this we, we use a particular uh, uh we know that when you're using a quadratic uh, function, we'll be using a potential maximum principle. But in this case, we try to look at it that we have generalized Langendry Klobuchar condition, which is dealing with this particular function. That is, when our five star is greater than is fast our fast time here we call it on and off when it comes to bank bank problem so when our switch our switching function is greater than zero we don't have problem but when we have one is switching function is less than zero but at the point when is it equals to zero we need to check it that's one that leads us to bank bank here we introduce the switching function our switching function is this, then our GT, TD, comma TA is in this format and our Q is in this format. Then we are able to establish our Hamiltonian at this point, using put I grade maximum principle and so on. Then we prove them. Then here we are able to establish our switching function by following partial derivative of the old U. So by the time we find the partial derivative, we are able to establish our, our switching function here. And the possibility of single arc arises is very high. So here we have the singular half here. The singular arc is when our switching function equals to zero. 
In the region where switching function is not equal to zero, we have bank bank control. In order to address the issue of singular arc, switching function is zero on the interval T1, T2. This implies that all derivative, because we have a lot of rigorous analysis on that. So lambda two and lambda four must vanish in the interval before we can do that. Then this evidence determines the optimal control in such region. For my explanation, don't worry, we, the paper will soon be out. We are still trying to tidy up one or two things. Then we all will see the beautiful mathematical analysis we did and uh, uh, you will appreciate it more about this um, switching function and the uh, optimal control. Then we have to differentiate all these and get our lambda and uh, differentiate second time substitute it. Sorry for cutting here. Then we are able to realize some of those things, uh, the little graphs here, although we are still working on this particular simulation actually. Well, because of this presentation, I just quickly show us few of the results, which we are still working on. Our time is in month, and here we have a variable. Now, here is the estrogen at the time when it's lower from its state. But at this time, when you introduce it, the medical, when you introduce the control measure, lower the SS at this point. But here, at the point where you still introduce, look at what happened to activation active tumor. And at this point, we have this, we have the TD to be lower because active tumor is already increased. Now, but I would like to talk more on this. This particular one is the combination of all the variables and whereby we have it to be in this format. Our T, our, Z, our P53 is in this format. That this is in control of what is happening. This shows the evidence of that medication to enhance to fight the tumor at this point. So in conclusion, we try to consider, in this world, we try to consider the non-differential system of, to describe the estrogen paradox. The three equilibrium points of the model were obtained, namely tumor-free equilibrium, active tumor equilibrium, and dormant active coexist equilibrium point. Then at the tumor free equilibrium point, the, is globally asymptotically stable if all these conditions hold. And um, at the end of the day, then we're able to establish that active tumor, uh, active tumor equilibrium point, which is globally asymptotically stable also hold if this condition also hold. The coexist happened at this point. When we introduce, we're trying to introduce our SS, uh, our, our, our tumor our, at the point of where all the tumor is there, active tumor is there, dormant tumor is there, estrogen and all of them are coexist, they are present. But in other words, low, low level of excess estrogen results in high production of TD. And the TD relatively low, T A is relatively low in T A, and the high level of T A and T D is obtained when there is moderate, when there is moderate level of SS, uh, uh, moderate of level of estrogen. Furthermore, for a fixed level of P53, one can see the increasing level, increasing estrogen level, for E not less than uh, less than Z not and to is not greater than this, that leads to activation of dormant cells. Persistence of active tumor cells. Why increasing SS estrogen level? We have all this that lead into estrogen paradox. Don't forget, as I said, that in depending on the current level of estrogen, increase increasing the it can lead to tumor persistence or elimination. Here is our references, some of the references. I want to acknowledge my host, Professor Rashid Ofiki, for his mentorship and uh, uh, the way he mentored and uh, his fatherly love and uh, 
for the encouragement and for believing in me. Then I want to appreciate the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics of Victoria, especially the HOD, this, and for accepting me to, for accepting to host me in the department. I want to say thank you to them. And uh, to you, COE, I can't be presenting today without COE Mass. Thank you so much for sponsoring the postdoctoral fellow for my postdoctoral fellow for, for the award. I want to say a big thanks to COE. At Gold, I want to congratulate my university, my university, the University of Victoria for now, for the anniversary of 113 years of assistance and um, can I please invite um, anyone to just unmute your microphone um, and please do ask your question or make your comments. Uh, Dr. Sagan, nice to meet with you. Uh, this is Wilhelm Hormuz, the director of the center. So it's a great pleasure that to hear your talk and the kind of work you're doing. It's uh, something that's uh, very relevant to Thank you. South Africa and of course the world. And um, I hope you continue with this kind of work and we need to showcase it even more uh, because there's some national imperatives for, for, for the center. Uh, just um, some question, or maybe a quick question, uh, not, nothing uh, like at once. Um, looking at current data, I mean, is there some simulation with your model with what's happening, for example, from a sample of, say, women in South Africa or any particular place? Okay, the question again. Uh, is this, I mean, your model when you, when you, if you, if you look at re, uh, real data, yeah, how does okay. it, uh, um, you know, match up to, for example, okay. any particular sample? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, looking at the raw data, if you can see the, from the only thing we can talk of in the red data is, remember I mentioned something about biomarker that you can bear us witness that a biomarker that is responsible for breast cancer is still, is not still uh, agreed on. Talk of like uh, post-trade cancer. In post-trade cancer now, you have PSA that is responsible. We use PSA as a biomarker to measure it. But with this data now, we only have fasted some of the data from those um, biological uh, papers so that it can fit in to the reality. The only thing is if we can get, you know, the data availability is always the problem when it comes to Africa here. And if you can get a particular oncology that can assure us that we can have a stable patient and we can surely use it to fix in the data and the way they did in the other medical paper. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Faisal, for your question. Um, Farai and Yabadza has their hand up. Would you like to unmute and go for, go for it? Um, yes, um, thank you, um, um, Honorable Oke. Okay. It was <laughs> into you have, um, you know, <laughs> um, talk. Um, I, I I enjoyed the talk. You know, I wanted to, um, from your objective function. Okay. Um, um, would it have made a difference if you had actually used a quadratic control uh, on the U? I could see it was just um, a linear control on that part. Would it yes. have made a difference? Yes, we can use it. As a matter of fact, where the study is going, we want to check the bank bank compared with quadratic. So we want to see what happened to patients during the bank bank 
and what will happen to the same patient during the quadratic. So we are trying to combine and co compare the two together. Because from the study, study show us that um, anytime you use uh, in linear control, it is, it is completely turned off. By the time you use um, the linear control, the period always continue to turn off. But by the time you use uh, that particular uh, quadratic, quadratic for small patients, the quadratic control comparable to linear control will always be the, it reduce same magnitude over the same time. But we want to check in the course of this study that we will use bank bank, which is switching function, and the second one, which is uh, quadratic, to now see the effects. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Prof. Thank you very much, Farai. Um, I have a question in the chat from, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, from Farai Chirove. Um, I'm assuming that they don't have a microphone. Um, so um, if it's okay, Shigan, I'm just gonna read the question out. Um, they say, nice presentation. In some, of your simula in some of your simulations, why do you have sharp corners? What is the significance of these corners in cancer biology? Or are these corners a numerical artifact? Uh, yeah. Don't forget that um, the sharp corner that you see there, especially in the uh, stability analysis, we are starting then from in a general cases first. By the time you start from general cases, which is initial, you discover that we try to combine the two, we try to plot the two together, especially the active tumor and the dormant tumor. We are just trying to see the effects of alpha, which is activation and the tumor clearance between them and using the same, using our level of estrogen. When we have low estrogen, moderate estrogen, and when we have high estrogen. So that is what we are trying to check. And I think that's why you can see some of them starting from that sharp corner. And uh, But for the optimal control, that particular one, you see that our TD is partly low, sharply low to the as, as, asymptote. But that particular one, it simply means it's, it assumes that all the dormant cell has already been moved to the activation side. So that is the little one for now. But by the time we do more simulation and check different parameters, as I said, we will we, we'll come up with good uh, results and uh, they combine the two together with the quadratic. On behalf of the center, thank you so much for presenting with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you um, for so many reasons, you know, including that you're a, um, you know, so affiliated with us that you're an awardee and it's been wonderful to see your research today. Thank so I want to say thank you very, very much.